Hey everyone and uh, welcome back. This is an update to my previous video in which I was discussing the implementation of the Coma Field Kit in your Eurorack modular case. I left out one important detail that actually will result in you not being able to power your module and sure enough I discovered this in uh, having missed the page before the page that I referenced in the Coma Field Kit instruction manual. It's clear as day in the manual, I just missed it. I was in a hurry to get this going. So what I discovered was I turned on my power to my small unit here, my electroacoustic unit, and sure enough, I could not get anything to work. I tried my DC motor and nothing was happening. At that point, I actually turned off or removed the power. I checked my cable and everything. I turned off the power and I got my wall wart back out. I wanted to just make sure that I hadn't damaged the unit or nothing was wrong in terms of the um, position of the red stripe. Indeed, the issue was not that. And as you can see here, actually, this is hard to do with. Um, so the motor is running. So we have no issue there. When you're doing this, be careful so as to not take off finger. Um, I have a whole wall, by the way, of these that I'll hope to uh, feature in an upcoming video of um, different uh, small propellers that I've modified with various materials in my shop using epoxy or glue of some sort that's fairly strong. Allows for some really incredible tones. In my last video I did for you at the end, there's a sample where this particular motor is plucking a, a dime store, a dollar store toy guitar. with some fishing strings, essentially, fishing twine as strings on there. And it makes a really wonderful sound. And I tried to change up here a bit of the pattern so that when it hits it, it would do some different things here. So as you can see, the spacing with having these two, these are uh, snare strings from a, a snare drum. And having these two like this uh, creates a little offbeat patterning to quote, um, uh, African visual culture if you look at textiles and offbeat patterning. So this is an example of that. Um, in any, any case, so what I discovered was it was working once I plugged in the wall wart. So let's unplug the wall wart. And the solution here is as easy as is imaginable. And again, I'll put it up on the screen here. So all I re really had to do was read that page of the manual prior to the page that discuss the faceplate. This is what you need to do. So in order to power it for your rack, this is the stock way that it comes if you're using your wall wart. So you'll see there are, it's hard to see on the camera, but there's this red um, cap that will switch the jumpers here. So right now the two bottom are occupied by the red cap and the top one of the three is open. You wanna switch that up. So just take your red cap, put it over the top two. So now the top two are occupied with the red plastic the bottom one is open um, in terms of um, having nothing on it. Once you've done that configuration, this will be ready to use with your Eurorack setup. And just to show you that's true and that I'm not completely losing it here in terms of not being able to read the manual, I will once again reorient my panel such that the red stripe is going in the right direction as indicated clearly in the panel. It's secure. Again, that is a um, 16 to 10 pin standard your rack power cable. I will replace that and I will go ahead and secure this later. As you can see, it's, it's set up fairly ready to go. I still have one more module to build in here, which is my solenoid expander module for my basal solenoid. So now let us plug in our motor taking care again not to hurt ourselves in the process. Plug that in and we're gonna turn the power on and we should be good to go. And indeed, we have motion. So it's a very easy fix. So um, unlike me, just be sure to read the manuals carefully and you will find that uh, clearly detailed in terms of setting this up for your Eurorack system. Again, a pretty easy operation. All you really have to do once you obtain, purchase the faceplate, 
is to go in there, take off those 17 nuts, remove the four screws that are holding the circuit board to the wooden case as we talked about, then flip it over, attach your power cable correctly, making sure you note where the red stripe should be on the left or the right of the module um, at that jack, and then be sure to take the red cover, put it to the top such that you have the bottom pin exposed, and then you will be ready to go here with Eurorack Power, uh, creating all your wonderful electroacoustic experiments. And just to close this out, I would say I heard some good responses from my first video, so thank you so much for that. It's great to be a part of the community of YouTube and Facebook and other places in terms of some of these musical experiments. And I would just say in the future, let's continue to collaborate, exchange ideas, whether it's through YouTube or Facebook and some of the pages out there for Coma and other groups that you might also be a part of. So happy experimenting. Good luck with all your electroacoustic experiments. And I will be back shortly with additional videos on issues and experiments and musical sound contexts like these and many others.